Hey guys, in this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to a MySQL database using Flask MySQL DB. So the reason why you would want to use this over something like Flask SQL Alchemy is because maybe your app is simple and you feel like you don't need the extra overhead of an RIM and you feel comfortable writing queries, or just generally speaking, you feel more comfortable writing queries directly in SQL instead of using something like SQL Alchemy that will write the queries for you. So whatever the reason, you have the option to write the queries yourself. So that's what Flask MySQL DB allows you to do. So to do this, I'm going to create a free MySQL database on the service called freemysqlhosting.net. Uh, you can go to the website. I'll leave a description in the link below. And after you create your account, you'll get to a screen like this, and then you'll have to basically create a database and then it's going to send you an email with your database information. So this is what you'll eventually get in your email. So I'll be using this database to test everything out. So to start, the first thing I need to do to connect to the database obviously is install the library. So I'll go ahead and install it using pip inv. So pip inv install flask dash mysql db. Okay, so now that it's installed, I'll go ahead and start up the shell. And because I installed a Flask extension, it should have installed Flask as well. So what I'll do is I will create a file called app. And this is where I'll put all my code. And I'll export a Flask ENV to be development. So the server will automatically restart. So the first two things I need to do are import the library. So first I need to import Flask. So from Flask, import flask capital f for the second flask and then i need to import uh from mysql db so from flask underscore mysql db i'm going to import my sql so capital m lowercase y and then capital s q and l i'll instantiate the flask app next and then i can instantiate the mysql object so mysql equals mysql and i'll pass an app of course, if you're using the app factory pattern, then you would do something like this. Uh, so MySQL without the app, and then you would later do um, MySQL.init app, and then you would pass in your app here. But because we have everything in one file, we don't need to do this. But it follows the same pattern as all the other Flask extensions. So now that we have that, we need to set up the configuration. So the configuration is going to go in between these two. And there are a few things that I need to configure because we're working with the database. So I'll have app config. And the first is I'll need the MySQL user. And then I'll need the password. So MySQL password. And then next I'll need the host. So where the database is actually located. This can be on your local machine or it can be on a separate service like I've set up already. Or uh, anywhere else. So we also have the database itself. So this is the name of the database. And then an extra configuration that you don't necessarily need, but I find very helpful is the cursor class. So MySQL uh, cursor class. And what this means is the way the data gets returned to you. So normally it's just tuples, but dictionaries are a little bit easier to work with when it comes to databases because the columns can be a key and the value of those keys will then be the value in a particular column. So for this, uh, just use the dictionary cursor. So it's D-I-C-T, capital D, and then cursor like that. If you don't add anything there, then you'll just get tuples uh, by default. And then the rest of the configuration comes from that email that I got. So if I go here, I see this is the server. So this is the host. So we'll put the host there. Uh, the DB and the username are going to be exactly the same. So I'll put those and I hit the wrong button. So we have the database name and the user for that database are exactly the same. And then for the password, I have the password in the email as well. So I'll just copy that. Um, and as long as the port is 3306, uh, you don't have to put any configuration. But if you want, uh, you can put the MySQL port and just put whatever port it is. But MySQL databases by default use 3306. So we don't need to update anything there. So now what we want to do is we want to actually interact with the database. So to do that, we'll create a route. So app route, we'll just create this on the index and call the function index. 
And to interact with the database, we need to use a cursor. So the cursor will allow us to execute statements and to get the results of those statements back. So to get a cursor, we can create a variable called CUR and then use mysql.connection.cursor, just like that. And then using that cursor, we can execute things. So cur.execute and we'll create a table. So create table and let's call this table example. And then we'll create a couple columns. So let's have an ID column and a name column. So name bar car and we'll make it 20 characters long. And then just put the closing quotes for that string. And then we can return something like done. So let's go ahead and try running the server. And we'll go to the URL for the server. And we see done. So everything should have created correctly. And to verify that the table is there, we can simply run this again. And because the table exists, it should fail. And it does. So we see table example already exists. So now let's try adding some data into the table. So we'll comment out that statement because we've already created the table. And we'll do something like this. So we'll uh, call execute and we'll insert into example and then values. So uh, we'll have one and then we'll have Anthony as the name there. So uh, we're going to insert Anthony into the table. Just like that. And we can actually do this twice. So uh, for user one, we'll have Anthony for user two, let's say Billy. And then because this is MySQL, we need to commit after inserting data or updating or deleting. So what we need to do is call the connection and commit. So mysql.connection.commit, just like that. And that will actually save the data into the database. So let's go ahead and run this. The server is going to restart automatically because I'm in development mode. If I go back here, I see, um, the cursor object has no attribute example. So I was thinking about the name of the table. This should be execute again, not example. So let's try this again. And we see done. So the data should be saved in the database. So the last thing we need to do is verify that the data is actually there. So we'll comment out those things. And let me just put a space in between them. And then we'll run a query. So uh, we'll have the cursor then execute this time instead of example. And then we'll select star from our example table, just like that. And because we're retrieving data, we need to take the extra step to actually get all of it. And since we're retrieving multiple rows, we can use fetch all. So um, we can call this results and we can say cursor dot fetch all just like that. And it's going to put all of our information into results. So what I'll do is I'll print this to the console so we can see what it looks like. And it will display done on the front end again. So run this, says done. And then if we look down here in the console, we see we have this tuple with two items in it. We have an ID and a name and an ID and a name. So now if we want to reference something uh, directly, we can say results of, let's say the first one, and then we get the name. So this should return Anthony. And we see Anthony there. If we change this to the other result, one, then we should see Billy. And we do. And if you wanted to get the IDs, then you can just change this to ID and you get the ID instead of the name. So we do that and this should, this needs to be converted to a string because ID is an integer. So I'll just put stir around it. And now if I run it, I should get the number two, which I do. So using MySQL DB is very straightforward. Really the most difficult part is just knowing the SQL to write. So if you're already comfortable with SQL, then you should have no trouble using Flask MySQL DB. So if you have any questions about this library, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.